So we'll take a little listen to our friend Janet Yellen, right? See what she has to say about uh, the current proceedings. And then we'll come in a little bit here. We'll take a little bit of look at the S&P back with Bitcoin as well, just before we end it off. But uh, I think uh, interesting little clip here, right? So let's let's take a listen. Uh, I would note that there was a report just this morning um, in the Wall Street Journal that a stable coin known as Te Terra USD um, experienced a run and had declined in value. And um, well, so it, I, I think that simply illustrates that this is a rapidly growing uh, product and um, that there, there are risks to financial stability and we need a framework that's, that's appropriate. I, uh, I would note. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe she is Janet. Janet didn't like that. You know her, her. You know picture from before was being used as a meme when the guys behind her were uh, lifting up that buy Bitcoin sign, right? <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I mean, stable coins, right? They do threaten to some extent. They threaten uh, the U.S. government, right? So, uh, yeah. Take that, take that for what it is, but it's interesting nonetheless that she even mentioned it. But um, yeah, just a little little touch on that. Generally speaking, though, right? There's a lot of questions going around just about Luna in general, right? And like I said before, my take on Luna is that it's just not going to be walking the same quite again. Right. Once, once something like this happens, right, there's going to be Terra's going to come out with a lot of emergency measures, trying to get UST back to peg all this stuff. And yeah, I commend Do Kwan for giving that a shot. Obviously, uh, he's, there's probably a lot of hard work going into this right now. But generally speaking, you know, if you take a look at different charts, right, there's actually two ways to compare this right now. If you go and take a look at, let's take a look at this, the Solana chart first. Let's put that on log, right? So Solana is not looking great, right? Just like Bitcoin, but what's the current price? 44 bucks. Where was that price last touched? Eh, probably around here in August of last year, right? It's well within its support range of price, right? So Solana coming down here, I think the low so far here has been uh, 30, 34. Five dollars and thirty cents, right? So again, finding support on its price here, right? And so when you zoom out on the weekly chart for Solana, doesn't look great, but also understandable, right? And so getting support in this upper region here is good to see, right? This is healthy price action in bad scenario events, right? Now if we go and take a look at Luna. Let's take some of the timing bands off. I mean, Luna has broken everything single structure. There's no point to try to look at this, right? Some things just die in, in crypto from time to time, right? And Luna got fucked up, right? Who buy? Trying to trying to uh, go into the different things that's going on with Luna right now, all the different information out there, it's kind of like trying to figure out, you know, the magic bullet theory and who killed JFK. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the result is the result, right? So that's why I say when people are like, "Hey, I'm going to try to pick up Luna at these prices, and I'm going to try to, you know, you know." Uh, get UST at these prices and wait for it to repeg and all that jazz. Don't just don't, right? Um, bad, bad idea. So, uh, <laughs> you know, if Luna was going to have done anything, right, it would have held up in this area here and it did not. So, you know, this is also, this also brings home a few other points uh, of, you know, stuff that we talk about in the crypto mindset course for you guys is just make sure 
right? When you are in profits to take profit. We've mentioned this many of times. Um, I was recommending Luna here at $15, right? I think it was August of last year. Told you guys, um, I think it was two, three or four times, multiple times um, up here. Well, I told you guys first and foremost last month, right? Luna was too risky to buy. A lot of people were asking me, should I be buying up here? I said, definitely not, right? Because um, Luna at that point, even if it goes up a lot, right? It's just in a high risk area, right? So I'm glad that a lot of people um, hopefully listened to that and did not buy up in that region. Um, but also, right? If you did buy down here in that $15 region, right? There's a lot of time here to take profits, right? In terms of number of X's as well, right? $30 is a 2X, right? $45 is a 3X and so on and so forth. So lots of areas here. And so when I was telling you guys I was taking profits, the reason why I tell you guys those things uh, on YouTube is so that you guys understand that maybe you should be doing the same, right? Because there's, I don't know what that sound was. Um, I think that was maybe one of the tip jars from uh, Streamlabs, but thanks. <laughs> um, anyways, um, yeah, you know, do de-risk, right? This is why we de-risk. This is, you know, if your moon bag goes to zero, because you already took profits, maybe you rolled that into Bitcoin or Ethereum or dollars or whatever it is that you want to you know, hold longer term. As long as you DCA, you know, those profits out into something else, right? Then all that's happening here is the moon bag goes down, right? And that's it still sucks to see profits right go down, but it's a lot better when it's casino chips, right? Than anything else. And that's the other thing, right? About going back to that simple common sense part that I was talking about at the beginning of the show of make sure that you're putting in what you're not will or what you're willing to lose, right? Don't put in anything you, you, that you you know aren't willing to lose. We say that for a reason. This is the reason, right? Um, so if you did happen to buy a Luna, right? Uh, make sure that it was a smaller position of your portfolio, right? And it, this sucks for everybody either way, right? It sucks for crypto in general too, because um, yeah, Do Kwan was trying to do a lot of things, but he walked essentially right into a trap if you want to look at it in that way, right? By um, buying up the Bitcoin previously. Um, so yeah, um, there's, there's a lot of ways you can look at it, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what's happened has happened and just make sure... Um, you know, that you don't go around fooling with this because I think there's so many people right now who want to go around fooling with it. I'm just like, uh, why? It's like, it's like seeing a, uh, you know, a bunch of rattlesnakes outside and saying, Hey, I want to go poke them, <laughs> you know, like really? Uh, okay. You can do that if you want, you know, if you got the gloves and the right, you know, stuff, sure. Go ahead and cry, you know, but seriously, um, anybody trying to think about playing this right now, it doesn't make any sense. So no matter what Luna does, whether they try to uh, you know, fix the peg or not, at the end of the day, it does not matter um, for Luna at that point. Just, you know, so anybody wondering about that, you know, that's long and short of it.